Welcome to our Get Data Protection Feed series for 2022. I am Nuria Pastor, a director in our Field Fisher Data team, and I'm co-presenting with Camille Epton, a senior associate, and Christina Holm, a trainee solicitor, also in our Field Fisher Data team. Today, we will be presenting on legitimate interest assessments. Thank you for joining us. In the third year of our Get Data Protection Feed series, we have a range of sessions planned for this series with a focus on how to document your data protection compliance. The key concept of accountability, which weaves its way throughout the GDPR, is brought to life in this series through a number of sessions covering topics on data processing agreement, which we covered on our, in our previous session, legitimate interest assessments, which we will present on today, data protection impact assessments, and also we have a three-part series on data breaches, sp specifically assessing, notifying and documenting these, and Article 30 records, or records of processing activities, and the ongoing task of once you have completed them, how you go about keeping them up to date. By the end of this session, you should be better able to explain what is an LIA, why you need to complete an LIA, and how to do it, as we'll take you through the three-part test for an LIA. And now I'll hand over to my colleague Christina, who will examine what is an LIA? Thank you, Nuria. If you have watched our previous modules, you might remember that one of the GDPR principles is that controllers must process personal data lawfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner. One of the requirements for processing data lawfully is to identify the lawful grounds the controller relies on. Article 6 of the GDPR sets out these lawful grounds on which controllers may rely in order to process personal data. By LIA, we are referring to a legitimate interest assessment. This is an assessment that a controller is required to carry out to see whether it may rely on its legitimate interests or the legitimate interest of a third party as the legal basis for its processing. Legitimate interests is one of the six possible legal bases that a controller may rely on under Article 6 of the GDPR. EU regulators have made it clear that the fact that this legal basis is the last one in the list does not mean it is not as valid as the others or should be taken as a last resort. By way of a refresher, a controller may, can, may rely on processing being necessary for either its own or a third party's legitimate interests. However, you can only do so as long as these legitimate interests do not override the interests or rights and freedoms of, a, of data subjects. The legitimate interests relied on can include commercial interests, individual interests, or broader societal benefits. Although legitimate interests are a popular lawful basis because of its perceived flexibility, you cannot assume it will always be the most appropriate. As we saw in the last slide, the legitimate interests of a controller or a third party have to be balanced against the rights and interests of data subjects. While there is no explicit obligation in the EU or the UK GDPR to document an LIA, controllers are advised to do so in order to not only document their legal assessment and ensure they have completed the relevant legal test, but also to comply with the GDPR accountability principle. Completing an LIA helps controllers ensure that the rights and interests of data subjects are taken into account. By helping controllers ask the right questions and objectively consider what the reasonable expectations of the individuals are and any impact the processing may have on them. So what is the process for an LIA? There is no defined process for an LIA under the GDPR, but there is extensive regulatory guidance on this matter. Typically, it is carried out in the form of a three-part test, and this is what regulators such as the UK's ICO expect. 
As the LIA determines whether you can rely on the legitimate interests basis, you should perform it before you start processing any data. You need to record all of the relevant factors, as this shows that you have taken everything into account prior to making your decision on whether you can rely on the legitimate interests basis. So here we have the three recommended parts to the test. Firstly, the purpose test, to identify the legitimate interests relied upon. Secondly, the necessity test, to demonstrate that the interests are necessary for the relevant purpose. And finally, the balancing test, where you balance the controller's interests against the fundamental rights and freedoms or interests of the individuals. My colleague Camille will now examine each part in more depth. Thank you, Christina. So first we're going to look at the purpose test. As mentioned earlier, you need to identify the purpose and the legitimate interests relied upon. So let's go to the next slide for more detail. So this is a screenshot from one of our template LIAs. And as you can see, it asks, why do you want to process the data? And what are you trying to achieve? Who benefits from the processing and in what way? Are there any wider public benefits to the processing? Other questions our template asks include, are you complying with other relevant laws? What would the impact be if you couldn't go ahead with processing the data? Our template also includes additional guidance to these questions to help you be as specific as possible. To give an example of how a controller would go about answering these questions, we can look at the ICO's example of lenders who share data with credit reference agencies about individuals' payments to their accounts. That data is then shared with any other lender that the individual wishes to get a loan from so that new lenders can assess the individual's ability to repay a loan. So, in this LIA, you would set out that the purpose is that the lenders want to accurately assess, assess the likelihood that they will get their money back. The benefit is to minimise the risk of bad debts and to ensure the lender makes responsible and sustainable lending decisions to achieve a, a reasonable rate of return. You would also point out that it's in the interests of the data subjects i.e. the loan applicants, that lenders make responsible lending decisions and don't let these loan applicants become overburdened with debt that they can't afford. And finally, you would highlight it's also in the interests of the public that lenders can make accurate risk assessments when making lending decisions. Without this, lenders may be less willing to lend or at least less willing to lend at a reasonable rate. Therefore, these benefits are vital to the proper functioning of the credit system. So in this example, the lenders would have demonstrated a clear and specific legitimate interest and have a good foundation for moving on to the second part of the test, which is demonstrating necessity. So let's turn to that. So the necessity test. Here controllers must carefully consider whether the, whether the processing is actually necessary for the purpose identified in step one. So let's take a closer look. Again, we have a screenshot here from our template. And for example, some of the questions you need to consider are, whether the processing actually helps to further the identified legitimate interest. Is it actually necessary to achieve the controller's aims? You'll also want to consider whether the processing is a reasonable and proportionate way to go about it, or are there, are there other less intrusive ways to achieve the same result? Other questions for this stage include whether the controller can achieve their purpose without processing the data or by processing less data.
if it might appear as though there are potentially other less, alter less intrusive alternatives, the LIA needs to be clear why these are not reasonable alternatives in the circumstances. Bear in mind that the fact that less privacy intrusive alternatives do not align with your business model may not suffice to disregard these alternatives. This brings us to the third part of the assessment. So the balancing test. In this final test, you need to consider the interests and fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual and whether these override the legitimate interests that you have identified. So let's move on to the next slide. There is no exhaustive list of what you should or could take into account when conducting the balancing test. However, based on regulatory guidance, at a minimum, you should consider the nature of the personal data you want to process. For example, is any of the data especially sensitive or private? Are you processing children's data or data relating to other vulnerable individuals? You should consider the reasonable expectations of the individual. For example, what did you tell the individuals when you collected their data? How long ago was the data collected? Are you intending to do anything new or innovative with the data? And you need to consider the likely impact of the processing on the individual and whether any safeguards can be put in place to mitigate negative impacts. For example, you should consider whether your processing may contribute to a barrier to individuals exercising their rights or any loss of control over the further use of, of personal data and any risks of financial loss, identity theft or fraud, among other things. When you examine these questions, you should look both at the likelihood and the severity of any harm that may occur. Now, the ICO and its LIA guidance gives the example of the balancing test that you would carry out if the controller were an employer who wants to ask their employees to provide contact details of an individual who could be contacted in case of an emergency. The data the employer would process about these designated contacts would be their name and contact details, which isn't sensitive, and therefore there should be minimal impact on these designated individuals by holding this data. This would be further supported if the employer limits access to the data to just its HR team and if the employer takes appropriate steps to ensure the details are only used in case of an emergency. We should then be able to conclude that there would be no negative impacts on the designated contacts and so the employer's strong legitimate interests and those of the employees in the employer being able to reach designated contacts in emergency situations would not be overridden by the rights of the designated contacts. So we can now look again at the learning outcomes for this session. Now we're coming to the end of this session, we hope you should now be better able to explain what an LIA is, what you need to do to complete an LIA, and the three-part test for an LIA, the purpose test, the necessity test, and the balancing test. So I'll now hand back to Nuria. If you're interested in learning more about data protection and privacy law, then do check out our YouTube channel, which has been going since 2020 and has a variety of content to bring you up to speed on some of the basics and some of the latest updates in the GDPR world. To join our team's YouTube channel, please use the link in this slide below.
and you can also join our email digest and receive periodic updates about the subjects that matter to you daily, weekly or monthly. Please see the link on this slide as well. So all that remains to say is thank you very much for listening to this session. We have been Nuria Pastel, Camille Ebden and Christina Holm. We hope you have enjoyed it and don't hesitate to get in contact with us if you have any comments or questions. Thank you very much. Bye.